This screencast is to support this lesson on words with ever and some functional language for evaluating on the topic of art. It's from Straightforward Upper Intermediate by P. Kerr and C. Jones and it's published by Macmillan. So the lesson um, starts off with some discussion, then there's a listening, some work on the vocabulary, then on the functional language and finishing with a discussion around art. So we want to start the lesson by engaging students in the topic of art. The lead in in the book is quite nice. Um, it asks about pictures or photos that the students have on the walls of their home and asks them to discuss them. You could even ask the students to bring their favourite um, picture or piece of art uh, from their home to the lesson and talk about it to each other and explaining why they like it. An alternative lead in would be to show them a piece of art or two very different pieces of art and ask them to discuss them, um, saying why they like them or don't like them um, and comparing and contrasting them. Next, they're going to do a listening. So you could show them this picture of the woman and just say, what do you think her job is? You might put some other visual clues um, on the slide. Um, you could put a picture of an art gallery or some pieces of art and just try and elicit just so that they are trying to um, guess her job and then you can tell her she's an art consultant and curator what do you think an art consultant and curator does they could just have a quick chat about that and then set them up for the listening so they're going to listen to an interview with her and they're going to answer these three questions to start off with okay but before they listen, I would suggest pre-teaching some blocking vocabulary. Um, so I've chosen eight items of vocabulary to pre-teach. Controversial, masterpiece, charitable donations, unveil, stain, smarten a place up, overpowering, and commission. These are all words and phrases that come up in the listening and they need to know the meaning of them in order to be able to do the listening task successfully. So you could make a matching task where they match these words and phrases with their definitions, plan some concept checking questions and drill any which are difficult to say, any tricky sounds, focus on word stress. For example, controversial, controversial, and you could elicit the noun controversy okay um smarten a place up okay smarten up um unveil might be a difficult one so think about concept checking questions and any drilling that needs doing and focusing on phonological features which the students need for this vocabulary before they listen now they can do the first listening task, so just give them a minute or so to read through the three questions. So they're going to be listening to get a general understanding and um, play the audio um, once, allow them to uh, peer check afterwards and decide whether they need to listen again um, because you're monitoring while they're peer checking and seeing whether they've got the answers right and then get some feedback making sure that they can see the answers. And then you can repeat the process again for exercise three. Um, this time they're listening for specific information, filling in the gaps uh, in the sentences. So the same audio. Um, play the audio up to where the first question is answered. Pause it, get them to check together, see what they've put in the gap and get the answer, show them the answer, and now they can listen to the rest. Repeat the same procedure, peer check, monitor, see if they need to listen again, if you need to play the audio one more time, and then do some peer checking and feedback, making sure that they can see all the answers nice and clearly. It says in the book that they can check in the audio script, but I don't think this is necessary, as long as you check carefully with them and they've got all the answers at the end, we don't need to include this as it's quite time consuming. 
as they've done the listening, there's a couple of discussion questions um, that they can talk about together on the topic of public arts projects, which the listening was about. OK, now we have a context. We're going to look at these ever words. Um, so we've got whoever, whatever, whenever, wherever and however to say it doesn't matter who or it doesn't matter what, etc. So we've got some sentences here taken from the listening that we can analyse. So in terms of meaning, we want to keep it really simple. OK, these are really useful words, but we don't want to get bogged down with lots of complicated analysis. You could change this statement at the top, which defines these words into a little task. Um, so use the words whatever, whenever, etc. to say it doesn't matter. Slash it's really important who or what. And the students just choose the correct option and that would be it doesn't matter. So in the first sentence, they can think whatever they like. Is it important to me what they think? No. OK, they can think any thoughts they like. Whatever you think of it, I don't think that anybody would say it's a masterpiece. OK, does it matter what you think of it? No. Wherever you go, you see large public arts projects. Does it matter where you go? No, because large public arts projects, are they everywhere? Yes. And whenever we unveil a work of art, people always get together and talk about it. So every time, okay? So the key concept here is this idea of um, any or every, okay? All these words suggest that there may be possible options and it doesn't matter which one you like, choose or think. Next, we need to look at form. Form's pretty straightforward. So these words are followed by subject plus verb, whatever they like, whatever you think, wherever you go, whenever we unveil. So you could just set them a little task with the ever word plus gap plus gap. They just have to look at these sentences and talk together and fill in the gaps with subject and verb. It's also useful to point out that in um, sentences with two clauses, so with two parts divided by a comma, you can actually put the ever word in the middle. So you could say, I don't think that anybody would say it's a masterpiece, whatever you think of it. You see large public arts projects wherever you go, etc. You can't do it with the first sentence because it's only got one clause. So you could ask them to change the position of the ever word in these three sentences to just give them some practice of um, differing forms. Then we need to focus on pronunciation. So drill the sentences, hide the slides so they can't see the written form and do some drilling, working on intonation and sentence stress and any other features that are useful. So uh, wherever you go, you see large public arts projects. Wherever you go, you see large public arts projects. Wherever you go, whenever we unveil a work of art, People always get together and talk about it. They can think whatever they like, etc. Now they can do some practice to make sure they understand the difference um, between whatever, whenever, wherever, etc. So um, they need to match the responses A to F to the questions 1 to 6 to make a dialogue. So set number 1 as an example and get them to look at the responses and decide what the answer is. When do you want to go for dinner? It's B, isn't it? A little later, perhaps, whenever you feel like it. OK, and then get them to do the others. You can get them to do them on their own and then peer check or discuss together. And then get some feedback. 
making sure that the completed dialogues are visual and clear and dealing with any issues that are still coming up. The book suggests listening to the recording to check their answers so they can listen and to the dialogues on the recording. That's another way of doing feedback. Now I find the um, second, um, now I find this activity as a second uh, control practice task a little bit abstract, so I've chosen a different one. I found this activity online where they just simply have a multiple choice of ever words to put in the gap. Get them to do the first one as an example, uh, peer check and feedback, and then they can do the rest. There are nine questions in total. Get some feedback when they've checked together making sure that they are clear on all the answers. Now we can move on to the functional language of evaluating. The first thing they need to do is read through the phrases and put them into two groups, positive and negative. They can do this as a group. Okay, so there's some tricky vocabulary, but see what they can do first of all, and then check um, the meanings with them um, after they've done as much as they can by concept checking and drill any tricky um, phrases. So um, it's a load of rubbish or it's absolutely worthless. It's extremely valuable. Okay, so working on pronunciation of important features there. So they've categorized the phrases into positive and negative and now they can look at the pictures and the other things in the list and you tell them that they're going to be auctioned online, check the meaning of auction and use these expressions to, uh, to say how much you think they're worth. Okay, so they look at the pictures and there's also Luke Skywalker's lightsaber and uh, an autograph photo of Elton John that aren't here. Um, you could add, add in pictures of those onto your slide and get them to use these expressions to talk about their opinions about each of these pieces of art. So hopefully that will generate some nice discussion and hopefully be lots of different opinions. And do make sure that they're using the functional language. So get some feedback on ideas and then they can move on to this speaking activity, which is to um, look at the pieces of art again and to decide which two works they like best. OK, now this will have come up um, in the previous discussion, but they need to select two this time. OK, and justify reasons why. Now for some further speaking using all of the language that they've been um, learning today. So number two, you work for a large company which has decided to spend 25,000, we'll change that to pounds, on a work of art to decorate the reception area. An art dealer has offered you three works with an estimated value of 25,000 pounds each. Divide your students up into A's, B's and C's and get them to look at the different um, statements um, are for each group. So the three roll cards for A, B and C look like this. Um, student A, for example, underline your answers to the questions. What's your role? Which work of art do you think the company should buy and why? So this person is the director of finance. It looks like the horse is the piece of art that you dislike the most. There's some extra information there. So you need to prepare some ideas and then everybody talks together and compares their ideas about what the money should be spent on. Then they need to decide together at the end which work of art they will buy. When you set this task up, make sure that they're using the functional language of evaluating. And if they can use some of the ever words, that would be great too. There's also this useful language here. When you've got some feedback on which work of art they've decided on together, they can listen to find out which one is worth the most. Then you can do some post-fluency error correction at the end.